Yeah, question, I didn't see it, I confess. Question time on Friday night. Nigel Farage yes. was interviewed. Um, so he is upset. Um, he's saying, you know, he got, he got a right uh, going over from the audience. He's saying it was an unrepresentative audience. It was, quote, the most extreme example of bias he's ever seen. He's now refusing to go on the BBC. He was supposed to go on a Laura Koonsberg show uh, this morning. There was lots of booing from the audience. I wonder if it's, you know, that text you just read out about on the doorstep I mean, Nigel Farage used to call it the shy kippers. I remember interviewing him in the 2015 election. People who were going to vote for UKIP back then but didn't talk about it. I wonder if people didn't want to just clap in that audience because they are, yeah, you but know, they are unsure of showing publicly that they're voting for reform. Julian, you might be right, but someone told us yesterday, and I, I haven't fact-checked it, so I can't, I can't be certain, but they basically said the show was introduced saying, look, we've got half supporters from reform and half from Greens. I, mm. I don't know if that was the case. That's yeah. what was reported. But in these things, normally the BBC reach out to political parties saying, we want you, we want you, we want you. I know that those types of people who go to those shows, they would clap a dead cat yes. if it represented yeah, yeah. their party. And the fact that no one clapped him, uh, I am not a conspiracy theorist, but I'm thinking something's not right here. It just didn't feel right that they didn't clap because honestly, yes. he could stand there naked professing a socialist views and reform members would still clap him if they'd been at that event. Yes. I exaggerate to make a point. I think that's why I'm slightly suspicious of this. Yeah, I, I mean, this programme was put together very quickly. Mm. They only announced, because I interviewed uh, the co-leader of the Green Party, Adrian uh, Ramsey, about 10 days before this programme, and they had, BBC had just commissioned this programme. So, you know, it may, maybe they... I'm not saying they cut corners on getting that audience together, but it was, you know, different it to was the usual, yeah. usual question times. They spend weeks composing the audience. Uh, but Or is it, you know, is it reform, just sort of Trump-style tactics, having a go at, the, you know, the system? And, you know, there was the Channel 4 report last Thursday night... Uh, showing this uh, volunteer, you know, making, uh, saying this stuff about Richard Do you Sina. share, now, it's interesting your view here, because I raised this yesterday and, and uh, um, uh, had some interesting conversations. But let me put to you what others have said to me. Look, the guy put on a false voice on the mm. doorstep. The guy, he's a part-time actor from what I can tell. I think to think he's Tom Cruise is like a yeah. bit over the top. <laughs> So that's why I call him, a, a, you know, he's, yeah. I mean, blimey, I've registered on an extras agency and yeah. I hope I might have a bit of fun. But let's just take it at face value that he's done some acting. A candidate can, a, a, a canvasser can turn up and you don't vet them, right? Anyone could turn up. The, people have put all those three things together mm. and they've said, given that this was outsourced to a production company, and we still not, um, we still don't know. Uh, 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 we don't know any facts, but the suggestion is that this company may have paid him or influenced him to say these things. You know, is that so outlandish in news terms? You work in that business. Mm. Is that so outlandish that 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 could happen or not? Look, it's possible. There will be an investigation. I mean, obviously, this guy is an actor, part-time actor, that wasn't mentioned in the in the reporting. But, but I mean, it was... The actors have views. Look, David Tennant yes, yeah, um, yeah, has yeah, views. Yeah. You know? um, it was actually someone we all know, Dave Bull, was on Channel 4 News yesterday. I think it was recorded at the Question Time on Friday. And he made the point, actually, you know, and they're deploying David Bull in this way because he does communicate well. He's saying, you know, all parties have volunteers. All parties don't vet their volunteers. Mm. This guy's a volunteer. This could happen to any party. Uh, he's saying, you know, that was that was a sort of point that was kind of lost during the day on Friday when sort of Nigel Farage was talking about it. Um, and you know, th that is the point, isn't it? But it is also true that far, uh, that uh, reform have now stood down candidates in three yeah. areas, not linked to this investigation, but separate reporting about things that these uh, candidates have said. I think yeah, you can't stand them down. I think they've withdrawn. Well, yes, support. yes. So that's yeah. that's yes, yeah. yes. So they're standing yeah. as independents. Um, you know, it's the fact, and David Bull said this as well, the fact is the election was called, they had to find people 
uh, and this happened to Labour in 2017 mm, mm, mm. quite a lot when we had the snap election. You know, they need to find people to stand in seats and you can't do all checks on... That's why you have snap elections. Prime Ministers think it gives them the advantage yes, because yeah, they have yeah. more control over their own candidates and disrupt all the opposition. Yeah. Who knows? We shall wait and see. Listen, very quickly before we uh, go to the break, yes. Gary Lineker's in trouble. That's your next story. Yes. Yes, this is interesting because he's, um, he's wearing clothing made by poverty-stricken workers. Apparently. Absolutely. He is the face of Next. There was a controversy a couple of weeks ago he was wearing a Next t-shirt on our BBC staff are not supposed to do this sort of thing uh, so he was flouting BBC guidelines it seems the Mail on Sunday have done this investigation into how those clothes were made it's saying they were made in a complex in Bangladesh. I mean we know they're made in Bangladesh because it says on the labels but they're saying that uh, the staff there are poverty stricken um, you know having a tough time making all this clothing. Next, I've been to these factories in places like yeah. Bangladesh and, 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 and many of them are literally quite horrific conditions out yes. there. They're, they're getting better in some cases but they are. Next is saying the factory was last inspected by its Code of Practice team last year and given an acceptable rating, mm. I should say. Um, but what it's about yet, acceptable wages? Well, there yeah. we go. It's, it's another controversy for Gary Lineker. Probably most embarrassing for, you know, for the BBC, I guess, that he's uh, allowed to wear this stuff on it. And, and to be fair, most people are walking around in these shirts and T-shirts made in these conditions and don't give it a second th thought. Yes. That is that is the reality. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I know this because I actually went on a parliamentary trip out to Bangladesh to look into this issue. It's yes. quite uh, difficult. There's uh, no, no comment from him on that yet, so maybe he'll tweet something at some point. Uh, 